So the most surefire way to win fights in the dark is to use surefire things. So you see, I said the surefire and the, the product and the surefire with the Look at all this Surefire stuff. So first off, the Surefire Suppressor with the Quick Detach, Surefire War Comp. These things are amazing in the dark for both mitigating muzzle rise and for reducing muzzle flash. And look, already on. Surefire Light, this is their Pro Series Scout, which can articulate like this and have it loosened up so you can actually move it. So you can be really close or get it up here close to my laser. And look at the Surefire Switch. It's Surefire Party is happening on the end of this rifle and Surefire sponsored this video. So thanks Surefire, check down below if you guys would like to see any of this goodies on your blasters. And without further ado, we'll roll a very cool video on the end of the world. Here we go. All right, hey, welcome back, folks. We're having a conversation about the end of the world, and some people really dig that. I don't know why. We are in the midst of the corona crud, which is circling the globe right now, and so apocalyptic whatever stuff is on people's mind. We want to know how to be prepared. Now, I get this question all the time. John, what is your bug out bag? And I wanted to do a video on the three reasons I don't have a bug out bag anymore. Now, I've got bags. I've got everyday carry bags. I've got get home bags. Just did a video on that. I've got hunting, camping, hiking, militaristic kind of bags. And so, man, I've got some really cool bags. I've got some reviews on one of the bags that you just saw pop up coming up soon. Really, really love that. So, I'm not against like a bug out bag per se. I used to have them. I used to have it all kind of mapped out at first and this is so embarrassing i had a bug out bag for me but i've got a family i've got like wife and kids and then we've got extended family we've got really close friends that we love like brothers and sisters that we just couldn't leave to their fate so to speak we i'm a rescuer i'm a defender i'm a protector which means even if it kills me there are certain people in my sphere that i would be very willing to die in the pursuit of protecting and so some people it's kind of like oh the apocalypse is here every man for themselves and you're just going to grab your pack say sayonara to all your loved ones and disappear into the deep woods to eat berries and rabbits and stuff and hey more power to you i'm just not built that way now i realize in the desire to make a video like this it's gonna be really fun first of all some of you guys are just gonna enjoy the mental thought experiment though i don't think any impending apocalypse is upon us and i'm really just thinking i'm a pretty normalish guy that just makes preparation there is a piece of my background that's really more majors on the security aspect and if if we're going to ask the question what if a societal collapse happened we might as well give it the natural respect that it deserves now people resist this idea everyone thinks that they sit secure but i'd remind you a good lesson of history is no nation sits secure every ancient nation has fallen, no matter how strong, whether it's the Grecian, the Roman, the Persian, even the British Empire is just this tiny, tiny little dot. It's just basically kind of the British Isles right there. And it's all receded where it was global domination, so to speak. Now it's way, way, way tiny. Anyway, no nation sits secure and we'd be naive to think that the United States will live uh, forever. It absolutely won't. And here's the thing too, is whenever a great nation falls, the inhabitants of that nation never, ever really saw it coming or could imagine that it would uh, come. So our end will come too, and that could be closer, medium, or really far away. I don't know, but I recognize no nation sits secure. Let's go ahead and be prepared. Now, in the preparatory community, people tend to major on a couple different factors. And after they have compiled more resources than any of the Joneses around them, a kind of chest puffs out and you get the feeling of like, I've got this. And now you're ready to judge me as well. And you're wondering of like, are my stockpiles bigger than John's? And if they are, then surely I'm the expert. So I'm, I'm not wanting to get in that competition with you to see who is ready to outlast the apocalypse. I'm really more of just asking a question so that we can be more prepared together. So this is a community service. It's not me, the big man. I'm ready and let me uh, pull up a seat so I can teach you a lesson. It's not like that at all. It's like, hey, let's have a nice chat. And I've got some areas of weakness that I need to grow into. And I'm doing just that. And I got also some areas of strength and I wanted to exactly speak to that. Whereas some people really focus on 
food and resource stockpiling. Others on bushcraft or skills, all of it's very good. Mine happens to be the security aspect because I realized that if some societal downfall came about, ultimately the persons with the guns and the know-how can just take all the resources from whoever they want. And that seems to be the case of history as well. And so really the most important prep that you could possibly have is security. And a lot goes into that. If you are naively thinking that because you have a lot of guns and ammo stockpiled, that that somehow means security, you're so gravely mistaken. What you're doing is you're building up an arsenal that a group of people with better know-how will eventually take from you. And many of you don't like that because you've shot at the range and you've got a lot of stuff. And that'll be a very unpalatable thought, but I'm not doing it as if to, again, have that contentious rivalry between you or I. I'm just a former Army Ranger and we were the premier raid force for the United States military. That's really what we did. That was our deal as if we wanted to take some type of terrain or different buildings or part of a city or an airfield we could absolutely come take it from military defended resources. That's what I used to do. Furthermore, by living behind enemy lines, so to speak, Afghanistan, Iraq, and living in those contexts for quite a while, we'd be, sur be surrounded presumably by lots of terrorists that wanted to kill us at every single moment. And so what we'd do is we'd take over a structure, we'd set up security, and we'd run operations kind of out of that uh, base camp where we're uh, taking over you know, compounds owned by warlords and we're defending those. But I mean, you set up fortifications, you start that security, but everyone around you wants to kill you. And so in terms of apocalyptic defend your keep, whether it's taking property or defend it, that is an area that I am actually an expert in. Whereas I've got a lot to learn about renewable energy and bushcraft survivalist skills and my stockpiles, whereas we could live quite a while on, aren't where I want it to be. So I've got a lot of growth there, but from a security aspect is how I'll approach these type videos. So I wanted to do some of that work of context so you knew where I was coming from and we can approach the question of bugging out and preparation, apocalyptic preparation specifically, with a little bit more of a sober mind, right? So now let's return to our question at hand, the three top reasons why I no longer really have a bug out bag. And again, lots of bags, lots of preparatory supplies and resources. I'm just not actually staging it all in this is my bug out bag, right? The very first reason is, is because I'm really hard pressed to find any context where bugging out is the right solution. There are contexts where you would absolutely want to bug out. So for instance, if there was a natural disaster, like a hurricane careening toward your house, that's a good time to bug out. You got to bug out. So that's a good, uh, good reason. If Negan and his militia of outlaws has moved into your neighborhood and it is doomsday apocalypse, whatever, now's a good time to bug out. They're going to take over your place and kill you, presumably. So let's make sure we bug out in a few key instances. If you live in downtown New York City in a high-rise apartment building, man, that is a bad place to be in. You should think about bugging out because any place would be better than that. And that's really the idea is where is better than where you're at. Now, folks, I, I have noticed in the preparation world, especially when they just started with the idea of, oh, if, if disaster comes, I'll bug out. I'll get out of Dodge as if the grass is always greener somewhere else when usually it's not. In a societal downfall, society has fallen. Now, there's some things like uh, a microcosm, whereas Hurricane Katrina hit, that was a societal collapse locally, and bugging out of that allowed you to flee disaster. But if this is some type of pandemic, if this is some type of true societal collapse, uh, uh, an economic that led to a social collapse where rule of law broke down, now there's really nowhere to run. And if you left all your resources and maybe your family and your friends and your community, and now you're also subject to all the things that can happen security-wise on the open road, that's disastrous. You're leaving all the stuff you have and the security and network that you have to brave the open road. And you could, I mean, get multiple flat tires or you could break down or even when you pull off the road to sleep i mean you're, you're you're there mobile what would you rather try to raid a secured fortified and defended home 
or a lone truck in the woods or on the side of the highway. It's kind of like, no, yeah, duh. One of these things is not like the other. And from a raid aspect, man, a solo vehicle, no matter how well prepared that vehicle is, is a far easier target than a structure with locking doors and some type of cover uh, attached to it. Now, some of you are driven to think about exceptions to that. And let me go ahead and say right now, there's absolutely exceptions, but the generalization of what I'm saying is absolutely true. You can disagree. You'll just be wrong, right? <laughs> the second reason I don't have a bug out bag is really I recognize the most important preparation that I could possibly have short of guns and the know-how tactics skill of how to use all that. And I'll just put under that under the auspices of weapons and security. The second most and, and really right up there with it is community. Recognize that if some societal collapse befell you and really everything around you is falling like a, a callus of cards, you would not be able to defend your property for any real length of time without many people helping you pull security. Even a very, very defensible property, and most people, whenever I go to their property, I'm always in the back of my head thinking, how would I raid this? How would I take this? Because that's just kind of how my mind works. Whatever. <laughs> By the way, I like you. If you're like, if I'm a friend of yours, though I may case your place, I'm not going to actually take it from you. I like you. That's we're friends. Except one of you. You know who you are. Uh, I don't want to leave my family and my community, all your friends and family. Like I've, I've got a, like a warrior poet HQ headquarters around here and we got a bunch of dudes and I've trained them how to all shoot and they're all kind of like-minded and we got a whole big network of people and I know what their plan A is. If the apocalypse happens, their plan A is to find me and I'm flattered by it. But what it means is we have kind of our own little network around here where we could really, we could do a lot together. If you want to survive some societal collapse with any amount of longevity, you'd need people, even a simple house, your house. If you really wanted to defend it, you need 24 seven security. That means guards on rotating shifts. So if you just have your single family residence, you may need at least three to four people at key terrain pieces around, not at the house, but around the house, locking down your perimeter. And those people would have to sleep at some time. So if you've got three or four guards, you may uh, on duty, you may actually have to have double or triple that who are rotating out. And then you also have the hard work of survival, which means to defend your one family house, you may need at least 15 to 20 people. And some people, it's just like you, your wife, and your kids. I'm kind of like, good luck with that. It's so easy to take that from you, it would shock you. There's other factors as well, just because you got your house, you got all your preparations. Let's say you've got some community that could realistically do that. There's some pieces of terrain and some houses that are just frankly indefensible. I've got some people who've got fantastic preparations, but their their terrain is just utterly indefensible. I've had, uh, I was hired uh, years back by a doctor who wanted me to come out, audit their property and give them a risk analysis. He was really into the preparation thing and he'd spent six figure money preparing his property. So I pulled up to his property. I was with him at the time. He'd pick me up from the airport, but he was about to uh, usher me into his property and take me through all of his preparations. But I had him drop me off kind of down the street. And I said, I'll see you in a little while. And this was really bewildering to me. I'm like, don't tell me anything that you have. Don't tell me or show me anything. Just let me kind of get to know your property as a bad guy from the outside in. And so what I did is I basically cased his property uh, and, and did my little clo Cloverleaf recon and just kind of saw as an outsider, how would I take what he had? And I very quickly in the first few minutes, I identified the key to his property. There was a piece of high ground that was really, the crest of it was really close to his house too. So it was kind of built down. And then he owned all this other property here. I'm like, man, whoever owns that little hill owns your whole property. So if I take that hill, there's no real scenario where you can keep your property. And if I had your property, anybody that takes that hill, that one right there, it is the key. It is the military high ground. It was just a beautiful setup. And I ended up showing him this and he was just very alarmed. And then I'm like, furthermore, what does it look like? Is this you and your wife here? How, how do you actually defend this place? What does that look like day to day? Because you have so many avenues of ingress, egress around your, your house and you, you have dangers and threats all over the place. What does a guard schedule look like? I get that you have bulletproof vests and you got guns and stuff, but are you going to pull security 24 seven? 
Can you do that? Uh, and, you know, it's just, it wasn't realistic. He bought a lot of stuff. He had a lot of stuff, but he didn't have a community and he didn't understand military tactics of how to actually take and keep terrain. So far, uh, the reason why I don't have a dedicated bug out bag anymore is almost all the contexts I can think of based on where I live and what I've got, bugging in is far better. And the second thing is community. This is my network of people, my family, my close friends. All those people would come in to a network if the worst case scenario ended up coming about, and that would be my best chances of survival. It's true if you got into the woods and you were alone, you could survive uh, kind of anonymously in the woods for, for quite a while, doing the whole traps and berries and fishing thing. But ultimately, you're going to come across people, and especially as something goes on longer and longer and longer, you're just really, really vulnerable, and it's not good to be caught out in the open. That's why people made castles. That's why people have fortifications and structures. They're easier to defend than just you sharpening sticks in the woods. A third reason why I don't have a bug out bag is really a bug out bag based on the people I have around me. And if you wanted to be able to defend something long term, really a bag is woefully inadequate for preparing for me and my family and whoever else with any type of longevity. I need a bug out truck and even my truck looking at it, I'm like, man, I can't fit all the stuff I need in there. And I'd really need an enclosed trailer. I'd want a, a, a convoy of vehicles with all the resources to be able to actually pull that off. The grass isn't always Green. There's a few reasons why I would want to uh, get out of Dodge like that, but a bug out bag, I'd need at least a bug out truck with an enclosed trailer behind it. I just got too many resources that you may need. You can bug out with a bag for a tiny short while, and if you're alone, you could live off the land kind of stuff. But uh, the fact of the matter is, I'm calling horse crap on most of you who thinks that you could actually leave the people that you love. When push came to shove and you realize they'll die if you don't take care of them. That's kind of the warrior poet thing as we live for higher purpose and we're ready to sacrifice in the defense of others. And so there's some people, if you were truly honest, you couldn't leave them and I wouldn't, right? Now, if everyone's dead, then I can go ahead and do the thing, go John Bunyan, live off the land with my special bug out bag. And then and, and that would work. And I could throw something together really quick because I got a lot of survival gear and I've lived outside and slept on the ground for of a long time. Now, for all you guys who are just super preppers and you know I'm a moron, you can just sound off in the comments like, John, you're an idiot. I'm like, oh, fair enough. I am on a journey. And like I said before, I haven't figured it all out, but there's elements of this whole preparatory stuff that I've done before. I I've lived out in the desert for a long time doing vehicle patrols in Afghanistan uh, where all we had was, you know, a few trucks with our rucksacks where we were living off that for as much as a month where we'd have to have occasional resupplies. I remember running out of water and having to stick ourselves with IVs to, to stay alive. I remember sweltering heat, spending all day underneath the Humvee to just escape the 120 degree heat. I remember running in place all night long when it was uh, 20 degrees below zero and I thought it was going to freeze to death and it was too cold to actually sleep. So I jogged in place for hours at a time. I have lived in similar things to societal collapse where everyone wants to kill you around you. you you have limited resources and it's just basically your know-how of terrain tactics limited resources and so and so i'm just trying to bear my soul a little bit and like in this problem there's areas which i have a lot to say and there's areas where i have a lot to just be quiet and learn and so you get you guys can sound off in the comments help me out as i'm on my journey i'll help you and let's approach this with humility if you're a preparatory boogaloo commander you can let me know in the comments that your plans are all awesome and i'm an idiot and i'm sure you're going to tell me that anyway guys thanks so much for tuning in make sure you like comment share this video subscribe toggle the notifications bell to all thank you channel sponsor for sponsoring this video train hard train smart and i will see you next time i remembered all the things i said all the things felt good about that Woo.